This is harvested. Oh, it just like is so narrow. I mean, wider at the bottom and then it goes narrow. That's what it looks like when they heal over. But this one is just hundreds, hundreds of years old. Where I go to harvest or when I go with my mom, the kids always come. We're the last family actually in Nitnat where it's a generational thing, weaving is handed down. So my kids are, you know, they're the youngest generation who are being taught uh, on a regular basis. So we harvest, you know, different grasses and cedar bark. Uh, weaving materials we harvest other medicines too different plants for medicinal purposes and you know spiritual protection different cultural things we're hunting in the fall you know we're living off of the land coming in here a couple months ago and seeing seeing all of the the road building that's already happening very how close the their buffer zones are to the river i mean in some places it's barely anything yeah. You know, this river flows directly into Nitnat Lake. This is all fish bearing habitat. We have different species of salmon in our lake. There's a lot of misconception that people are protesting all logging when really, um, you know, we, we need more sustainable practices. I was thinking about my kids and their kids and if they want to build a traditional dugout canoe, can they? You know, can, will they be able to find something like that? You know, something we've been doing for thousands of years. And, you know, they there's a, there's a chance they won't be able to do that. You know, that's connected to our language too. Language and culture are, are intertwined. You can't have one without the other. And if we have parts of our culture that aren't gonna be around anymore, you know, what does that do for our language?